This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Dragon Chiller. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Well, welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we're going to figure out how good these cards are. Right. Yeah. How good these cards are in CDH. Yep. These are your maybe a little bit underrated cards. These are maybe not played in every deck. These aren't the staples, but th- these are cards that yeah. are seen in some CDH decks. And we're going to see how many of them are good. We have a rating system here. We have five pieces of paper, six we actually. Have six pieces of paper, yeah. Where we've all written. Now, see, in my camera here, it looks backwards to me. Is it going to look backwards to them? I have n- probably. <laughs> But that's that's their problem because I already have trouble with numbers that are front facing. You know what we should do? So, we'll, we'll record the whole thing two times: once with these okay. numbers, and then once with the mirror well, numbers. If we just this is the fix, right? Oh, just there do it this, is. Right? Turn it upside down. Yeah, this that's is the perfect. fix. All right, yeah, no, that okay. definitely. Yeah, that's so great. five is our first <laughs> number. <laughs> We're gonna rate them on a, a scale from zero to five. Zero being this is a casual card. I do not think it has a home in a CDH deck. Casual. Tra- Trash. If you'll notice, Cameron's is a donut size because I had mentioned that his was a little bit too small. Yeah, so. mine was just originally this inner ring here, but now Art it's uh, if you'll it's compare, like a 3D. Now they're closer in size, which there is more go. fair. And then all the way up to five being this probably shouldn't even be on the list. It's more of a staple it's than a anything. It's a staple, yeah, right? exactly. That's, that's, that's the rating that we're going for on these yeah, cards. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, it's 645. Let's talk about these. <laughs> I have 35 cards here. We'll see how many we get we'll through. We'll see how long we get there. Exactly. So the first card that I have is Displacer Kitten. Okay, are we going to read what all of these cards do or are we going to assume that the viewer knows? We could read them, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to put us on the spot here, but I feel like it's a good way to either waste some time or fill some time. Do you want to on... read the cards? Because my voice sure, is dying a little bit. I'll read it from bit. my brain right now. It is Displacer Kitten is a three generic and a blue mana for a kitten displacer. Yep, yep. What's a creature type? Nope, a kitten displacer, because <laughs> the, the second creature type is always its job, right. and it's a displacer. Right, it's a cat beast. Yes. And it says, from memory this is, it has an ability that only it has avoidance, which of course I remember. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile up to one target non-land permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. And it's a 2-2. Two, two. Should we do this at the same time? Like on the count of three, we should we reveal, are, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. we are. Okay. So, so displacer kitten. So figure out what number you want. And you're not allowed to peek at the you're not allowed to peek at the other person's number okay, either. Got it. Okay. My, all right. And you all have right. to show it to the camera then. A scale of a ten. On one, count of ten. Ten, nine, nine eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Three. Oh, sorry. Three. Wow, it's yeah, a three. Same. Yeah, yeah, it's same. a three. three. Okay. Uh, you go first. Why do you rate it a three? Why not a four? So I feel like, in general, I underrate this card. Um, but what's really good about it is that there are some insane upsides to it when you have mana rocks or, like, a dockside extortionist. Yeah. And if you have enough pieces, it can be very easy to go infinite with, like, three fairy and... Uh, really Soul any mana Soul Red, right? Yeah, yeah. any uh, mana producing uh, mana positive rock with Teferi and another one uh, it will allow you to, or not even another one, you just need the mana positive rock so that you can blink the Teferi and then the Teferi can bounce the mana rock producing mana, drawing you card and you can repeat that loop. I also have been really liking Displacer Kitten with Atraxa, using Atraxa as your commander. Displacer Kitten, every time you you know trigger Displacer Kitten, you can flicker the Atraxa, get, get a whole bunch more cards. It can really get crazy out of hand. Yeah. The reason that I only have it as a three, as you'll see here on the chart, uh, is that I feel like it needs a lot. It's a four mana sorcery speed creature that you need to and then do other stuff. Exactly. Uh, I don't love that about it, but I do like the fact that it can pseudo protect itself, if I'm correct, right? You can exile up to one target non lane permanent you control, so you can target itself. So if someone tries to kill it, you can say, hi, in response, I will cast a non creature and flicker my displacer kitten, protecting it. I love that about it. That's great. But just the fact that it's a four mana sorcery that doesn't produce anything on its own, you have to then, inst- and then also do do other stuff that's why it's a little bit less than to me but that's exactly why i gave it a three two right there are just so many more efficient combos and this is part of a three card combo where none of the pieces are in your command zone we were a one card two card combo format yeah you know what i mean the best decks are using combos that are one card or two cards this one you just need a couple new, too many pieces we just can't deny the incredible amount of value that this thing gets you absolutely yeah it can definitely let you go way over the yeah. top if you're already getting near the top exactly exactly so that's why we have displacer kitten at three great all right so we agree on that one 
Next one. Well, now I have to type in three for each of us so we remember oh, yeah. that we gave each of us a three. Got to remember, of course. Okay. If uh, You at home, if you also like to play the game with us, feel free to rate the cards as we go, and we can compare at the end, see how good our evaluations are. All right, so our next one is Defense Grid. Defense Grid. Okay, this is coming out after this week's episode, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so they've already seen what Tyler's done. Yes. Okay. So, and Great. we literally just recorded narration for that right. as well. <laughs> okay. So let's see if we have a bias towards this okay. at all. All right. I'm going to, okay. I hope we don't pick the same number every time. Okay. Actually, I kind of hope we do because that means our evaluation is equal. Right? That okay, means ready? that we're either really good or really bad at this. All right. After, on the count of six. Six, five, seven, four, eight, three, nine, two, ten, one. eleven. A two. A wow. A two. Wow. Look at, that. Look at us go. Okay. A two. We didn't read what this card does. Uh, we'll do it now. We should I'll read it from my memory this. again yeah. like I do every time. It's a two-man artifact. Uh, type is artifact. And it says... Players can't cast, it says, from my memory, it says each spell costs three more to cast except during its controller's turn. So your opponents can, it costs three more to cast their spells on their turn. It's like a silence. It's a mono-colored silence. silence is kind of how I think of this. this Maybe is more like a docent of the falling leaf. Yep. Uh, the reason why I have it as a two, I'll go first this time since you went first. Time. The reason I have it as it only a two is that it's so much worse than all of the white options. If you're in white, this card is unplayable. Uh, it is silence is a, a much better version of this card. Grand Abolish is a much better version of this card. The reason why this one kind of sucks is it can protect your opponents, which is not good. Silence and Grand Abolisher don't backfire. Even Flame Scroll Celebrant, that's the name of that card, right? The, not the back side of it, but yes, the, the front, front side. The of front it. side of it. Like it, it's to protect you only. Uh, even some of the green ones, like Veil of Summer and Autumn's Veil, those ones really protect you. Defense Grid can help your opponents out. They can stop your opponents from interacting with your other opponents, which is not good. So oftentimes, you really can only cast Defense Grid on the turn you're planning to win, and then you better win. You better do it. And again, it's one of these cards that like you can't pass because you're just giving someone else the game, potentially, which is a terrible feeling. So you know, if you're playing in non-white decks that are trying to go fast and are looking for more protection for their quick win i think this is an option yeah but be prepared to lose the game if someone held up mana yeah it, yeah it really i only like this in non-white very aggressive decks if you're not white and you're in a very aggressive deck this is an option and if you're mid-range or if you're control or if you're stacks or if you're in white don't play this card i think at least that's me. I wouldn't play this card. You can do whatever the hell you want. No, I wouldn't either. Well, I, I did, and I hated it, yeah. and now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our next card is Days. Ooh, okay. So let's, Days. let's read this one from memory. You so, got this one. Yeah, I'll read yeah. the last two from memory, so you're up. So this is one in a blue for an instant that says you may return an island to your hand instead of playing this card's cost, uh, and you can counter a spell f unless the owner play pays one. This one on the count of one. Okay. One. One. I have a four. Oh, oh I have a one. Very differently. Wow. Okay. All Ex right. Explain to me why days sucks, and I'll explain to you why you're wrong after that. Because there's one deck that wants it, and it's Rogsai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. And now, it's really good in that deck, but outside of that deck, like, I am not looking for this, and there is much better one mana counters or even free counters that I'd rather play over this. Yeah, see, the issue, I have it as a four because I think the card is pretty underrated. I think free counters should be weighted. We should be thinking about them a lot more. I think that it's just so different than a one mana spell, being able to have a free mana counter spell, and having an island in play is not very difficult. Um, I, I agree that what holds us back is if you're in a four color deck, guaranteeing that you have that island in play is uh, gonna be a little bit tricky. So Definitely. it's really, it's in three color or less decks more often than not. But I think there's a solid argument that if you're in heavy blue that you should try days out. I've gotten blown out by the card several times. Another free spell is just huge. A lot of times you just need one more counter spell and you're, the decks can get so close to winning. So having just that extra free four spike I think is really huge. Yeah. Okay. I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. But like so many of the times your blue sources are City of Brass and Mana Confluence and like Forbidden Orchard. And there's a lot of things that make blue the Battle Bond lands that wouldn't let you return this. So, yep, that's true. Uh, I, that's true. E even still, I think free is too good to pass up. If you have the option for free counterspell, you should be thinking about it more than you are. At least for me, that's what I'm like. One, it just 
we're getting to the point where now for a while two was acceptable and now i feel like two man interaction is like way too slow we're gonna eventually get to the point where one man interaction is too slow so i think the more interaction that you have access to now that doesn't mean that you should force it in a deck that can't play it but i do think it means that if you're in a deck that could play it or if you're thinking about two different decks and this deck can play days that one can maybe it helps sway you towards a deck that can play days because i think it, it it's high power i can see that but there are other free counter spells that we're going to talk about that i'd rather have so i think we can leave it at that great let's move on to the next card the next card is dismember oh boy i got a number for this one uh on the count of green orange red yellow green five I got Dismember a four. is incredibly powerful. The reason why I think Dismember is incredibly powerful is because we have a lot of fast men in this deck, in this format. A lot of soul rings, a lot of mana crypts, a lot of things that are producing extra colorless mana, and Dismember can make use of that. I know the three pips for off of the Ad Nauseam is a little rough. I know having to potentially pay four life for this card is a little rough, but the ability to be so flexible with your mana and for one additional generic mana and four life, or be flexible and have it be two mana, this can kill a lot of things in the format the main things that it doesn't kill is stuff like consecrated sphinx or holebreaker horror but like how often do you come across consecrated sphinx and holebreaker horror was going to kill you anyway exactly so whatever i mean if you had a removal that could stop it that would be better obviously but what this does hit is crom winoda That's professional face breaker and yeah. like every other creature in the format that is super important a lot of the removal that i've been looking at recently i really wanted to be able to hit for toughness one i want all my removal to be able to hit winoda if that's an option there's a couple of other four toughness creatures that i think it's important to hit which is why i'm playing lightning bolt a little bit less and dismember a little bit more recently but that mixed with the flexibility of dismember is why i rate it as five one it's also kind of a pet card of mine at this point it's like one of the main things that every time i take wheel of misfortune out of a deck i put dismember <laughs> in just a little bit it's of extra interaction yeah. and it's just it's proven to me oh time and time again to be super super relevant i put it as a four because in a lot of the more colors that i get the less i want dismember because i have other options that i can go to and i'm not always drawn to black for its removal suite mostly because it can really only deal with creatures but in decks where i really want to be able to deal with creatures more i do really look to this card in that case then. absolutely yeah and i think i just play a lot of decks that want to deal with creatures yeah i think that's totally fair um all right the next card is time twister time twister do we read what dismember did dismember is an instant and it cost one and two Phyrexian black mana, and it says target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Great. What is the card that you mentioned just now? Time Twister. Time Twister is so this a is two generic and a blue for a sorcery that says each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven cards. That one I do know from memory. Yes. This is one of the power nine, the only piece of power nine that is allowed in our format. Uh, and many for a long time it's considered one of the most powerful cards ever printed that's why it was in the power nine it was one of the top nine powerful cards ever printed what do we rate it now how is it in cedh we'll tell you on the count of what seven I yeah i think i'm six, happy with that five, five four two, two one. one a two i gave it a three a two you want to go first why do you give it a three because i don't know I, I'm I give it a two. Mine. I'm changing what, are you going mine lower? to a two. Yeah, it's yeah bad. because this is how I feel about yep. the card. Give it to me. It's not what. It, this is how I feel about the card. Yep. So it sucks. <laughs> Most of the time that it's cast in someone else's deck, yep. when I'm in the pod, that player doesn't win the game. Yep. And Similar to Wheel of Fortune, if you wheel, a lot of the times we 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 are notoriously not lovers of wheels because you can give the game to your opponent. Your opponents are drawing 28 cards. You are drawing seven cards. It's just not a good rate for you, right? The difference with this one is this one is graveyard hate, kind of. So you can screw up your opponents, sort of. You can put their graveyard into your library. The issue is I'm playing Underworld Breach a lot. I want my graveyard right where it is. I don't want to lose it. So right? already it's worse than Wheel of Fortune for that reason in yep. those colors of decks. And it's really only good because you can do loops with it, right? So like it gives mono blue ways that it can go infinite without having to play any dead cards, which right. is certainly nice. That's why it's not a one. But so many of the times I see... like. I really only use wheels if they're going to win, if they, they can guarantee that I'm going to win the game. Yep. And that means because there was a Notion Thief in play, or there was like back in the day a Hullbreaker 
Is that the name hole of the cult? Breacher. Hole Breacher. I think. there was a Hole Breacher in play. And that I won a ton of games because of Hole Breacher. And now that that is not as easy of an option to assemble, like that has just made wheels so much worse. Yeah, and specifically Time Twister has become oddly very niche, I think, because of that. Some people still swear by it. I see it in Grixis list a lot. I'm certainly not a bad card. But me personally, I'm taking it out more often than I'm yeah. putting it in recently. Just because the main reason for me, like I said before, is I want access to my graveyard. I'm, I play a lot of decks that want to use their graveyard. I don't want to be holding up a card in my hand that could potentially not only help my opponent out, but could also hurt me. That's not what I'm trying to do. Now, if I owned a Time Twister, I would put it in every blue deck that I play. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but this is not the case. So. I would certainly, at the bare minimum, build a deck that could play Time Twister because there still are decks, Thrasios decks. There are decks that can utilize Time Twister really well. Yeah. They're just not decks that I'm interested in playing right now. I totally feel that. So our next card is a Braid. Ooh. This is one okay. that we've notorious had op- notoriously had opinions on in like 2021. All right. So what does it do, Dylan? A braid is a one and a red for an instance that has deal three damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. Cool. You ready? I'm ready. On this count of three because it does three damage. Three, two, one. A three. A four. A four. You are a, a little four. higher than me. A little higher, yeah. I, I like a braid a lot, but I only like it in lower color decks. I feel like once you start getting in the four color piles, braid becomes a little bit bad. Mm. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I really liked it in Jessica Ishai. Sure. Which is a three-color deck, and that's most of the colors in Magic, so... Yep, that's true. If you're doing graveyard stuff, it gets rid of Dranith Magistrate and Graph Digger's Cage, which is super relevant. That can hit most of your things. Um, it hits a lot of the relevant stacks pieces. I'm not going to say them all, but most of them have three toughness or left. The only one that doesn't is the Spirit Rule of Law. Exactly. The um, Eidolon of Rhetoric. Right. Uh, the, um, the main issue is just two mana is kind of a decent amount for interaction, especially if you're in four colors or if you're in uh, a way to play abrupt decay or assassin's trophy i'm looking at those more often uh and if i'm in blue i'm probably going to look to or like an extra bounce spell before i play a bray right more often than not yeah i feel like this is kind of clumped in with a lot of those other two mana removal spells that are a little bit more flexible than like the one mana removal options that you have and by removal spells i don't mean bounce spells like i mean hard removal spells that are actually killing the thing which is something i really do like about a braid yeah the bounce spells are only good in so many decks sometimes i think we play them a little bit too much because they're very good in quick storm decks but in other mid-rangey decks the bounce spells can be pretty bad uh something like a braid can be really helpful especially in like a mardu deck i feel like mardu colors yeah. is like the perfect colors that are looking for a braid more often than not but i think if you are in like three color red decks i think it's perfectly serviceable Definitely. even if you are playing blue i found so i kind of kind of like the four yeah for that. yeah you yeah you might be right but I- i'm sticking with my three that's fair all right so the next one is wandering archaic Ooh, okay, sure. Okay. I, know, I know what I want for this one. Do you know what the card does? Uh, roughly, but I wouldn't be able to read this Do you know one. what the back of the card does? Some, like, gains three. Someone gains life, I think. Both players gain life. All of them or both? Uh, you know, I think it is all players. I'm not going to read the back of it, but it's a five mana four, four that says whenever an opponent casts an instant or sport sorcery spell, they may pay two. If they don't, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. And by the way, when I said read, I mean, I knew that from memory. Nice. Very good call. And from memory, let's count together at the count of three. Let's decide what we're going to count down from. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. 146. Five. Shit. Okay. 146, 146 145, 145, 145. 144. 143 and then we can speed it up <laughs> two, two one. one a two one you a hate one. it more than i do i'm not yeah. a big fan of this card which is why i put it as a two but i see that you hate it even more do you want to go you want to tell me why yeah because every time uh, i've powered this thing out on turn one and lost the game yeah that should <laughs> not be the case for something that you can power out on turn one that's five that costs mana. five mana right like it did nothing and that was my whole hand <laughs> not worth it too that's risky that's so not worth it right? sometimes it's gonna be great it's gonna restrict everyone but sometimes this card's gonna do kind of nothing like in a counter war it's great but you just yeah. had to spend five mana on like a stacks piece for counters that people can still get around it's attacks I'd rather have a daze in my hand I'd rather have another counter spell in honestly a counter I'd rather have a daze yeah. right <laughs> like there's I'd rather have a daze and no islands in play I, I don't like that it just feels a little bit too unreliable I'm not sure why just five mana for that for 
five mana, I need something that's going to damn near end the game. And I feel like this just doesn't do that reliably. It's just another stack piece. If this was three mana, now we're talking. So that's a real card. But the five mana is just too much, I think. Yeah, and as a as a stack piece, five mana is a lot to ask for because it is going to get bounced. And if that player who needed to get rid of it doesn't win the game, then it's like your responsibility then like as a stacks player to play that thing back down and play as if it was like a collector oof right like when you have to when you know that it's coming so now you have to commit five more mana to this thing this 10 mana stacks piece now that isn't really doing too much for you Five mana do nothings. Five that, mana not do where nothings. I want to be. You no, know, not definitely where I want to be. Not. Definitely not. Our next card is Resculpt, which, by the way, is another card I lump in with a braid. It's yeah, like these two the mana, braid. slightly more um, better. Slightly yes, more better. Slightly braid. more better. This one is yeah. a, a, a generic and a blue for an instant that exiles an artifact or creature straight out, except they get a 4 4. It's a blue red elemental, I think. That's 100% what it is. It's the mascot from Strixhaven for sure. one, of the, yeah, absolutely. one of the fucking houses. Uh, when you compare it next to a braid, it, it's better than a braid, right? It exiles, which a braid doesn't, and it gets rid of any creature, any toughness. That's much better. Yeah. The downside, obviously, why don't we rate it we first? We should let's rate do, it let's first, do what we're talking and then about. we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm so the there are four or? uh resculpt is uh has R E S U L P T Just to show it. Just show it. Three. 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 It's a three. It's a three. It's a three. So you rate it less than a braid. I think it's about the same as a braid. You tell me what tell me why. So hmm, that is funny because I didn't play this in Jessica Ishai, which is kind of funny. Played a braid. Uh but I did play a braid. Uh which is I guess that makes sense for you because you rate a braid higher. I do rate rate a braid higher but the reason why is because this is blue and like i look to blue more for bounce spells yeah and the bounce spells that i want to play are also going to be able to deal with artifacts whereas a braid does a lot more work in the non-blue decks which is why i give it a higher rating okay Boom, look at that that's great my logic yeah. makes sense and yeah. i'm not a hypocrite no it absolutely does i mean the four four is not nothing also if you're getting rid of an early stats yeah. piece and giving them a four four that timna deck or that winota deck is going to use that four four that's not going to be good this and card- if you're the timna deck you can't give them a four four right. so like this automatic cuts it out of consideration for the blue tim the decks right exactly um and then you're you're telling you make sense if you're in blue already you can just bounce the thing separately um it, it doesn't change in the fact that it is still it kills kills everything it gets rid of a lot of stuff if you're a combo deck and you just want to make sure the thing is gone you don't want to worry about chain of vapor so that they bounce their thing back bounce something of yours back your very permanent based combo i think this will just help you get rid of the stacks piece that you need to but if you're looking to play the long game, I'm not interested in this. And more often than not, I'm playing at least two to three bounce spells before I get to this one. Definitely. Yeah, this is this I feel like is still more of like a like a creature removal spell that doesn't require you to yeah. cast a counter spell after you bounce a thing if it's still going to. Yeah, maybe I should rate it a two then, since I, it seems like I do rate it a little bit lo- worse than a braid. I think I'll go with two. I'll change yeah. my answer. Again, to a braid two. does more work in the non-blue decks the than decks this that does. Need it. Yeah. Exactly right. So, so you're gonna change yours. To I'm gonna a go two. to a two. I'm gonna I go need you to, to show two. the camera. A two. You got it, dude. That took you so long. I have to cut out <laughs> so much. All right, the next card is Necropotence. Oh, okay. what does this card do from memory? Oh, this is I should know because I have this card tattooed on my knee. But this is a black box. I'm sure black. you don't have the text <laughs> tattooed on your knee for an enchantment that says skip your draw phase. And it says for zero mana, yeah, it has an activated ability that you can exile the top card of your library. And then during your end step, it goes into your hand. And if you were also to discard a card, instead you exile that card. Did you say that you had to pay one life? Yeah, I think so. I, I, hope so. I heard you say zero mana. But oh, zero mana and pay one life. Is, is that I say it all right? I probably said it exactly perfect. I don't know. All right. This one uh, is going to make me sad. Um... One, two, three. A two. A three. I gave a it three. a three. Yeah, this is a card that I've begin to love in casual. And in casual decks, I play just pay seven, refill my hand, and just play it like that. But in CDH, more often than not, I just feel like it contradicts with some of the other stuff that I'm trying to do. Making me uh, exile the cards that I discard is a little bit bad for Underworld Breach. Making sure that like I have to wait the entire turn cycle to get back to me. At one time, I think that was... Uh, you you could do something with that, but now I just you get targeted so much. You just have no way to actually 
can win the game when it gets back to you because everyone knows that you just per- sculpted a perfect hand. Uh, as much as I love the card for what it does and how cool it is in the history of Magic, just lately I, I think it's a little bit less powerful in the CDH decks that have won it in the past. But it can still win you a lot of games, oh, which sure. is why I don't have it as a two. Like yeah. if you play this card right, if you build around this card, maybe Definitely. you put Shimmer Mirror in your deck. Or maybe you play Final Fortune. You can, right, you, you can use the charge right away. Plenty of ways that you can can get the advantage immediately yeah definitely I, yeah i just i think you have to try too hard to make this card work and the other strategies like leaning more towards the ad nauseum you just playing overall better cards sometimes if you can get this out on turn one like yeah. if your deck is built to be able to power this out on turn one win turn two i think it has a lot of great opportunities in like those kind of lists i honestly but i wouldn't just play this in my regular ad nauseum decks. right yeah and i think think sometimes this can work more as like a Ristic study or how I played in casual where you're just like paying five life you're just paying 10 life you're not digging all the way deep down because if you only pay five or ten the table's not going to be quite as threatened by you but it they'll is, still hit you they'll like, still hit they you of course yeah you. of course they'll still hit you but it can act more like a Ristic study where you're just drawing you're refilling your hand each turn I still feel like it's just it risks something like Ristic Study is better, obviously. Yeah, I definitely agree. The card's powerful, just lately, a little bit less so for me. All right, our next card is Arbor Elf. Arbor Elf. This Arbor one, Elf. This one used to be like a fucking auto-include, I feel like. All right, ready? you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. A one. Zero for you. A zero. Wow. I've, every deck I've Cut. played it in, I hate it. Yeah. And I've just stopped playing it altogether. It's unreliable. I don't want a reliable, an unreliable one job. Sometimes you get a Utopia Sprawl on something, and boy, you're pumping out some extra mana. But to me, that's a little bit too Christmas Fairyland. You know what I mean? It's just I've not gonna. It doesn't come up enough. I've never seen that yeah. in CEDH. <laughs> Ever. I'm pretty I've, sure I've done that at least once. No? no, no. I don't remember it okay. if it did happen. Like, And I feel like that's something where I would have been like, hmm, because I've thought about this for a while now. I've never seen that. And really? Like, there's, Interesting. It just doesn't come up enough. And if you're going to search, like, look for a two card combo, this is the worst two card yeah. combo you can go to look for. What? There's yeah. so many hands that you look at and you're like, oh my God, I have the Battle Bond land in my hand and Mana Confluence. I can get this out on turn one, but it's, it doesn't do shit, dude. It doesn't do shit. Yeah. What's the one that taps for a generic mana? The Boreal Druid. That one's better than I'm this one. I'm playing that over Arbor Elf every single time. If I'm in mono green, that's when I'm playing this. And I've never built a mono green deck that wasn't just for the channel. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mono green still play Arbor Elf if you're in mono green. This one's so fine. If you're in like it. an elves an elf ball strategy. If you're in you can play it, It's right? very specific. It's niche. But it used to go in Thrasios decks. It used to go in four-color piles. I don't play in four-color piles no. anymore. No, thank And you. I don't even think that the... Upgrade of Yavi Maya, Cradle of whatever the fuck it's called, yep. is a reason to put Arbor Elf back in your deck. Again, that's a two card combo for just like a, the only just upside is that dark. your, yeah, now your Cradle can be untapped with the thing, which I guess is really cool, but like. Th- if you're in that that's not good. low percentage, if you're already playing Elf Ball, if you're already playing Mono Green, then yeah, why not? But it, I don't, yeah, not why, not in all of the CDs. Yeah, don't anymore. play it in any other scenario. This is a big fat Cheerio. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Toxic Deluge. This one I like a, a bit more. I'm ready when you are. Ready? Count. What's the countdown? Uh, five, toxic four, three, two, Deluge. One. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a four for me. It's a three for me. Three. I like this card. I think we should be playing it more. Gets rid of everything. Gets rid of all the stacks pieces. Pretty easy to cast, just off of one pip and a mana crypt. Um, yeah, I think it is. It, more often than not, I've been mean, games where like, fuck, if I just had Toxic Deluge, I could get myself out of this hole. Yeah, and I feel like I typically will underrate this card because anything that takes away from my ad nauseum life is something that I'm not loving. What about Toxic Deluge versus Dam? How do, which one's better? I feel like I play Dam over really? Toxic Deluge. In Malcolm Timna, there is no Toxic Deluge, but there is Dam. Interesting. Okay. Dam is nice because it can be spot removal. It can just kill the one thing for like relatively like a little overpriced, but like yeah. it's fine, right? I yeah, but like and I have the same issue with Fire Covenant too where I don't play it in my ad nauseum decks where even though it can be like a black red cyclonic rift for three mana yeah i would i have a hard time 
weighing that option against ad nauseum because it's either one or the other in yep. a lot of games. Yep. Yeah, I ha- I play that in Corvold right now. I'm playing Fire Covenant in Corvold. I actually like it because Corvold can win not through ad nauseum. It has so much draw power that I can just That's say, true. hey, this just isn't the ad nauseum deck. I'm just going to do Dockside and just draw off Corvold. So Fire Covenant's great there. But if you're specifically on Nas, I can, I can see why the Fire Covenant can be a little bit worse. The power of being able to kill more than one thing just feels so necessary it's in so CDH good, recently. Right? You got to go with one thing. I feel like you need one Plague Win. You need either Toxic Deluge or Fire Covenant or Dam if you have access to those cards. I think it's yeah. important to pack one of those and be able to tutor it or something like that. And if I'm playing white, I yeah. think I am leaning into dam instead of this. Yeah, normally I feel like Cyclonic Rift feels the slot a little bit better. Like if you're in blue, just play Cyclonic Rift and that's your Plague Win effect. That's, that's where fine. I'm at. And in my Grixix decks, I don't play Toxic, but I do play Psych Rift. Right, because I think that one's just better often yeah. than not. But if you're stacked out, you're going to be able to get to seven mana eventually. Depends on your meta. Like I love Toxic Deluge against Winota much more than I like Cyclonic True. Rift against Winota. The, you know, Toxic Deluge is much easier easier to cast yeah. and get rid of everything for pretty uh, cheap mana whereas cyclonic rift you have to pay seven to get rid of it all maybe this is a card that i would play in more of my in more of my tournament decks yeah and i wouldn't play it so much in my i'm like going onto a stream and okay. i'm gonna play a deck right why why the difference because because i think some of some cards like can this is on the list containment priest is yeah. next Let's talk about containment. Sure, we'll right just now. we'll just go on to containment priest. We can talk about the difference between tournament magic and stream and, magic. And stream magic, right? Or like our content yeah. magic, okay. right? So containment priest, where is it on this list here? Give me two seconds, because I, w- I was thinking about this the other day. It's a two drop, so on the count of two, one, two, two. I have it oh, as shit, a four. I wasn't ready. I have it as a two. A four. See, why do you have it as a four? I, I have it as a, as a four because I think Brian Koval playing it in the tournament that he did was like a perfect sniper for the format. Even though I don't think he actually ended up playing it in the tournament itself. It was, I think it's- By an, that you mean it didn't come up. It didn't come it up. It didn't come, he, right. he, it was it in was his, his deck, deck, yeah. but it just didn't I'm not, come I'm not, up. I'm not actually sure that it came up, but I think it hits It hits a lot of the metagame choices very easily and doesn't affect the blue form strategy at all. It gets. It really hits the Winota strategies and it really hits the Birthing Pot strategies, a lot of the green decks. Yeah. It fucks with a lot of them. I think it's just, is a perfect scalpel to a lot of very- like all the tier two decks, all the not, all the not cream of the crop, everything under that containment priest screws up. I it's think. so good in those scenarios. Yeah. But see, for me, it's a meta call scenario. Yeah. And like, if I'm going into a tournament, like I'm expecting a lot more Winota. I'm expecting like some amount of Kinnon. These are decks that are super weak to containment priest. Right. But if I'm just like going into like a random pod or like if I yeah. am, am just like building a deck that I'm going to play with like you and Tyler or like on someone's stream, I'm not going to just auto include it into my deck because I know it's for specific things. Yep. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, if we had a sideboard, like that's something yeah. that I would I would consider in there, but it's not something that I would go to unless i'm playing in a tournament what do you think about sideboards and cdh you think we should have them no no it would no. fuck everything up i actually How saw this i saw this on reddit the other day actually okay. so uh there was a thread about sideboards and i just i don't like the idea yeah it would add such a crazy layer to the game you would you have to pre-board you which see is, the commanders which and then is sideboard, not right that that feeling sucks yeah because that's just like oh well i'm just gonna tune my deck to play against these commanders and, then, and, yeah. and sometimes they're playing like you're playing stuff for winota and like a like suffer it would super fast decks it, it would make all the decks be blue farm everyone would just yeah. well i have to play the most generic deck ever because i don't want anyone to be able to have anything that's a scalpel against and me and i don't want to have to play a post board game in the tournament oh after the first game already they, takes so long. forever yeah. i'm not doing that uh, so unfortunately no. i yeah, no I, side I, I boards I totally fine with wish type effects not being included in yeah. cdh T- to me i the only thing i have to say about the wish effects is i wish that wish effects got things from exile so like actual exile because it's yeah. safe from outside the game so if someone path to exile is my creature it would be nice to be able to i want to be able to wish for it back I think that's, that's a very fair. small yeah. thing but for me this it says outside the game it should be yeah. the same outside the game but i don't want to like oh i play i play fast as oracle in my sideboard oh, and no. four wishes in my deck yeah that can i, don't, find I it. Yeah. don't want that yeah, yeah i don't want that either no okay okay so that yeah that's where i'm at with containment priest is that i will that and the other card that we just talked about toxic deluge right like that's a card i'm more prone to play in a tournament setting as opposed to just like i'm building this deck fair okay yeah that makes sense then our next card is mind break trap mind break trap okay sure i I got one for this one you ready no 
All right, now I'm ready. Okay. Uh, on the count of a billion. A billion. Five. It's a five. It's a five. It's a five. I think this is. A st- I think this should be a staple. We at this stopped point. reading these cards. Oh shit. <laughs> we'll just read this one. <laughs> we'll start them again. Okay. Um. So mind break trap is a two and two blue instant that can be free if an opponent has cast three or more spells this turn. Right. And it can exile as many number of spells from the stack as you would like. Right. I think this card is. A perfect card for CDH. Does everything we want to do. I, it, it, uh, the big issue, the only issue, is it has a four CMC, and in your ad nauseum deck, that's going to ping you for a bit. That's a stinker. But- you can only max out at a certain number of them, and usually you play F- Force of Will, Fierce Guardianship, and Force of Negation over this. Right. I, I think that you should be playing Force of Negation and Mind Break Trap, and I think there are some decks that should be playing Mind Break Trap instead of Force of Negation. Yeah. But there's the extra free counter spells. That's what's going to win you the games in, like, the Mirror. Those are going to be a lot of the trickiest matchups. If you're in, like, the Grixis Shell, I think is, like, the Mirror's types. And cards like Mind Break Trap is what helps you win in the Counter Wars. It helps you win in the late game. It also helps stop the early Storm decks. It overall just does a lot of stuff. It can also be protective. It can help you. can yeah. protect your own thing. If you have a ton of mana, being able to just exile any number of spells, it being a hard counter, Counter, countering creatures, it's, countering. It, 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 yeah, that's right. Also, really good. It gets countering uncounterable, countering uncounterable spells is also super handy with this yep. too. Cavern of Souls, naming human for Grand Abolisher has been very popular recently. And Mind Big Trap says, "Fuck you, I don't care. I'm still gonna exile your Grand, your grand Abolisher." It's the opposite of a silence. Yeah, everyone casts so many spells, and you say, "Nope, you don't get them anymore." Right? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I think the card is is awesome and it, more decks should play it. For it gets sure. you out of so many situations. This is the card I'd much rather have over days. Sure. I, yeah, I, I, I feel put like, this one in before days. I yep. feel like this is a fair. The free clause is fairly reliable. Yeah. There are going to be times where you don't have it, but I think that because your opponents can't get around a four spike so easily, I think that also makes it so much better. Yeah, they are good at different points. Days is much better early in the game. True. This is much better late in the game. Well, it depends because very early in the game, Ad Nauseam could be trying yeah, to go off and you have true. to use this on an Underworld Breach yeah, at some point. I do think the cards are comparable, but I agree with you that Mind Break Trap is a little bit better than Days right now. I have this way above Days. Yeah. The next one I put on here kind of as a joke. It's Give it to me. Wheel of Misfortune. You already know. You, you already, already know. know what it is. Big fat goose egg. Donut. Card sucks. It's unreliable. You can get priced out of it really quickly. If you've already ad nauseum, it's terrible because they can easily just bet more life than you have. Play Winds of Change. Yeah. It's a one mana version of this that does exactly what you want it to do. Basically. And it does the same thing yeah. as like Wheel of Fortune, basically. Kind of. Well, this one is always, it goes to you up to seven. Winds of Change just refreshes them. This one is good if you have zero cards in your hand, but people can price you out of it. It's not reliable. It's not going to do the thing that you want all the time and paying 15, 20 life for this is just not going to be great. And your opponents get to decide. Sometimes they'll want a wheel and it'll be really good for them. Card stinks. And the people that are going to pay this amount of life are going to be really happy to see that card on the stack. Yeah. yeah. It's not good. It's not great. I don't love it. And I cut it all the time. 100% of the time. All right. Here's another card that I think is going to be pretty easy to do. <laughs> great. Hydroblast. Oh, yeah. This one will say what it does. It either destroys a red permanent or it counters a red spell for one blue. I have a wet one. I I don't. I'm not saying I'm coming around to it, but I don't have it as a zero as I would have a long time ago. I think the cards are why, one. <sighs> why? Tell it me. does. It does hit Dockside and Underworld Breach, which are the strongest cards in the format. That's it. That's all I got. It hits Winota and it hits Crom. I don't care about Crom, but it hits Winota. Maybe this should be. Maybe this should be a one because this this could be another like tournament card. Yeah. Where like I would play this if I'm expecting so many red decks and so many instances of Dockside, but I'm not putting this in my average deck. The issue is even in the decks that play red cards, they're only playing a very few amount of red cards, and this only stops shit at the end. And the reason why counter spells and interaction is good is because they're flexible. You can play them in the beginning or at the end of the game. Whereas this one, you can only play at the end of the game and 
oftentimes by the time that you're trying to get rid of the Dockside or the Underworld Breach, they've already cast the Ad Nauseum. They already have 30 cards in their hand. They already can counterspell that shit. But if you can counter play a spell instead of that, that can counter the Ad Nauseum, like a Spell Pierce, which can also counter the Underworld Breach. I understand Dockside Extortionist is a creature, which is a little bit more difficult, but... But do you know what else counters that? Give it to Force me. Force of Will, and you're Force already playing will. Force of yeah. Will. Yeah, there's already... And uh, Mind Break Trap. Mind Break Trap. One. Or just counter whatever they're going to cast after the Dockside Extortionist. I don't know why people are always so afraid of Dockside Extortionist. Counter what comes after. Give them the mana. Right. Now they've wasted a resource. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the card can come up in these situations, but I'm still not looking to play it. No, neither am I. Never. Never. All right. Uh, next card. Lim Duel's Vault. Ooh, this so one. This is a blue and a black card that lets you look at the top five cards of your library, and if you don't like them, you can pay a life and then look at the next top five, and you can continue to do that and repeat that as many times as you like until you find five cards that you like, and then you can put them on top of your library in any order, and then the rest of the cards go on the bottom of your library. On the count of five, four. I didn't have time to look. I was three, trying to remember what two, it was. Two, one. A two. It's a two for me. It's a I one. have it as a one. Honestly, I think you might be right. I'm, I'm already starting to get swayed. I it's, used to really like it. I used to love it. older formats. Oh, yeah. It was great. And by older formats, I mean like older metagames of CEDH. Sure. Yeah. I remember one time seeing a Reanimator used to play Limdu's Vault once in a while as a one over something, and I said, this card is trash. What the hell are you doing this? I don't know if Reanimator played it. A kid at my local game store played Limdu's Vault in his Reanimator <laughs> deck, and I was like, why the fuck are you playing this? That's was, the whole <laughs> meta. That's right. every meta. Right. Right, yeah, that's a whole meta. I, I, once upon a time, it was good in CDH. I like it in Yuriko still. I still think it's fine in Yuriko. But just two mana for its card disadvantage for two mana, that's not great. You might have to pay a lot to find what you need. I, there's just better tutors. We just have Wishclaw Talisman now. We have other things that replace Limdul's Vault that are better. And if you're, like, really worried about, like, exiling things with your Tainted Pact, like, that's basically what you're doing here. Right. And if something happens where, like, you don't win the game, like, I, you you kind of, like, brainstorm lock yourself where yeah. you go, okay, well, I know what the next three cards in my deck are and they're not gonna help now that i've been stopped right yeah a hey. lot of the issues that i have with cards are things that really fuck you over when you can't win the game yeah. after you've tried to you don't want it cards is, that can backfire no right and it's great when it works out right but like you're not always gonna have silence you're not always gonna have every single counter spell in your deck and sometimes your opponents have like ristic study and they were able to get enough value so that you can't win right you gotta be prepared for every single quadrant i yeah i want my all of my cards in my deck to be good at every point of the game exactly and, and this one is just not good at all points of the game and at this point we have too many good cards i want all cards that are good at every point of the game and especially in these colors like there's many better you're in demir you have the best yeah you have the best options already exactly carpet of flowers is our next okay. card okay i got one all right on the count of three because c is the third letter of the alphabet great one, a b, b c. c three 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 yeah if you asked me a year ago i probably would have given this a four four or even a five even a five for a yeah. while this was an auto include for me every green deck i would put it in no matter what the problem is that other colors are getting better than just blue exactly yeah so it used a lot to be it used to be guaranteed there was gonna be three blue decks at the pod where they're like it was so rare to see a non-blue deck now that's not the case there's so many other decks that have legs even without blue white has gotten so many more tools red has six powerful cards that are carrying the whole color right. there's so many more things that you can do than just be playing blue decks right. so it's started to become a little bit less reliable in decks that i don't need to rely on mana dorks as for so much i still do really like it but i'm liking it like less in thrasio decks mm -hmm. as i am in like rocco yeah i could see that I, the, the 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 floor for me is oftentimes still a one mana uh, permanent that makes one mana a turn which yeah. is the best there's nothing else that compares to that just right there one mana investment for one mana per turn nothing does that on its own right yeah. like spring leaf drum has to tap another creature but it's close to that but you still need that other thing soul ring does more than that there's nothing else that does just that floor and uh, yes the floor can sometimes be one mana investment for no reduction back but the fact that sometimes it can be making two or three mana a turn especially if there is a mono blue or two color deck at the table this the ceiling is is worth it to me that it's still at a three but 
in a year from now, it might be at a two. The card yeah. is getting worse and worse. That's like kind of how I feel about it, right? The the floor of the card is still a really good base. Still fine. It's still a really good base, yeah. Um, all right, the next card. Peer into the abyss. Ooh. This was another one. Depend on when you ask me, my number's going to be completely different. So this card is four and three black. We're only reading them when we remember to read them. Yep, and only for memory. Mm -hmm. What happens when you cast it is that you draw half the amount of cards in your library, and you lose half the amount of life that you have. Round it up each time. Speed. Yes, exactly. Uh, on a scale of seven, on a countdown from seven, since it's seven mana, seven, six, five, four, four three, three two, two one. one. It's a two for me. It's a, it's three, a three for me. I had, I almost gave it a four. When this card came out and soon after, I probably would have rated it as a four or five. I've loved it for a long time. It's pros of being able to be cast when you have two or three life is really good. But I just found more often than not that it, you just don't need it. You, you just, I, I, it's more safe to have your ad nauseum deck be able to go less than seven life once you're ad nauseum. I want to be able to go down to four or five and be pretty comfortable. And, and Peer into the Abyss makes that much more tricky. I think that's fair. Here's why I love Peer into the Abyss. You, when you are in heavy creature pods, yeah. you will be the one getting beaten down every single time when people know what you are playing. It is really nice to have a way to win the game still and draw your and draw half of literally half of your library more cards consistently than ad nauseum will give you too. By the way, and you don't need to worry about your life total. In that case, you can still win if you're at. Four. Yep. It this definitely this card is definitely a safer card than a lot of the other um, black options that draw you a whole chunk of cards. It's definitely a safer yeah. card. It's just, I, it, it, I, it's a little bit. It's just too slow. I think. It's a little bit more mana, and it can be deflecting swatted. Sorcery speed, and, that sucks. And sorcery speed. But those are the only three things that hold this back outside of Ad Nauseum. If we did not have Ad Nauseum, I think this would be the best thing that you could do, is yeah. cast this thing and then win the game immediately. It's another one that kind of belongs in the same camp as Toxic Illusion, I think, where like in the right mid-range pod, Peer into the Abyss is awesome. You want as many of these effects as possible because there's going to be a lot of counter spells. So you want to be able to try and try and try again. But I, I think I I think of it almost weirdly like training wheels. Like I, it's helpful sometimes, but it's just not needed. I would much rather instead have a piece of interaction or another way to find ad nauseum or another way to win that doesn't include my life or something like that. Instead, go for the dual caster twin fame line instead of the appearance of the best or something like that. Yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. It's still a fucking cool card and the art is so fucking oh, sick. Oh, the art's nuts, uh, yeah. I, I want to play have a hard, more, The, the art reminds me of the uh, of Elder Centipede from One Punch Man. Remember when like it yes. like, kind of molts and its head Definitely. pops Dude, out of it? Definitely, it's the same fucking it's thing. exactly yeah, what it reminds me of. It's the same of. thing, yeah. absolutely. The card is sick, but I've been taking it out more and more recently. I, I love that card. That's fine, that's fine. All right. Forbidden Orchard. Forbidden Orchard. Okay. That's our next one. Forbidden Orchard. This is a land. Taps for any color, but when it does, give your an opponent a 1-1 one, one spirit without flying. Correct. Yes. Are we ready? Yep. On this, on the, uh, ready the one? count of six. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three. You got one. a one. A okay, one. you hate it. Tell me why you hate I it. I hate it. I've, I like feel like I never include it in really? any deck that I yeah. play. Okay. I feel like even in the cases where it doesn't matter, it can still matter. I just played a game with Magda where you were giving me the one ones yep. and I killed you because of one ones. I was able to get rid of that opposition agent of yours wow. with the one ones. Like, it will still come up. Yeah. There are decks that, you know, even if they're not playing Cradle, yep. they can still sacrifice creatures to Diabolic Intent. This makes sense for what you were just saying earlier. Like, this is a card that can backfire. It can be good, but it can backfire, and that's obviously not a card that you are into at all. I get that for sure. I want to make sure that I can cast my spells. A lot of times in the decks that I'm playing this in, the 1-1 one, one creatures, I tell myself that they don't matter, but you're right. Sometimes they still do. Sometimes they definitely still do. I think it's I mean, playable, but I, I understand why you rate it less than you used to. Even like in in, I feel like I want this in some two color decks. Is when I want this. Otherwise, I have plenty of options in four and five color decks. Interesting. And the four and five colors where I want to play it more because it's a it's a land that can tap for any color. I have so many better options. I already have plenty of five color lands. My fetch lands are basically five color lands mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Okay. And I have as many battle bond lands as I want. Okay. Yeah, I, I see your point. I mean. I'm more interested in this, I think, in like five, once you get to five color. But if you're in five color, you're probably playing the Gila, and then this card definitely sucks. Right. If you're playing Kenrith, I think this one still is a fine home. There's certain 
decks that are just going to want to make sure that you can just make sure you can cast your spells. But I see what you mean. Yeah, this, maybe, is, maybe this I should would be like my thirty second land yeah. in most decks, and most decks I'm capping at thirty. Right. Yeah, so. I see what you mean. Yeah. There's just a lot of good options. The, the, a lot of the times, especially if you if you're in those lower color decks, even you can you have the battle bond lands now. You have so many other options that. And if you're you in don't not need a, it. if you're in not a tainted pack deck, like you yeah. can run more basics even. Definitely. And, and Basi- they, yeah, basics are like, good. Very underrated. We should put basics on this list. We should put basics on this list. <laughs> Basic lands is yeah. next on this list. Great. <laughs> on the count of B for basic. All right. A, B. I have it as a three. I gave him a two. A three, yeah. I, I think that basics are still important. There's no downside. Opposition agents never turn them off. Magus of the Moon's never turn them off. They're just reliable. And I like that you have having a reliable option in your deck, I think, is important to try to make sure you at least got one or two. Yeah. Um, I rated them a little bit lower because I'm not playing them in every deck. And the printing of the channel lands being singular color lands yeah. that I really like has made me stay away from basics. Whereas before Adawara, like all my blue decks would play an island because I wanted a way to still be able to like chain a vape or something, sure. really. Yep. I, I see that. Yeah. I definitely definitely see that uh i still I, I still think that they're 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 worth a shot all right this is our last card of the night okay cool and it is saw in half Ooh, okay i, I know we're ending on a banger yeah, i've been playing this one more lately i'm gonna give it a high rating but it's only because of what i've been playing in uh, yeah if I'm... you if you know i've been playing corvold recently so take this with a grain of salt three two one a four for me i gave it a three card is nutty with dockside extortionist and Holy I, shit. I've started to think about the Broodlord. What's that new thing from Ordling that new Broodlord. set? Broodlord. I have no idea what it's called. It's a, it's a dragon, not a demon. We said it was a demon last time, I think. Oh, and it's a dragon? It's a dragon. Itself is a one-card win con now, because if you can get that out, you can find this. You can cast the saw in half on it and then have the two copies one gets sacrificed and one gets peer into the abyss oh yeah maybe, and then maybe i should have rated peer into the abyss higher yeah peer into the abyss is so good yeah so and yeah right sacrifice. and then you just use the sacrifice that pays for the peer into the abyss and then one yeah i could definitely see that the uh, that, that definitely is a reason why this card's getting better and better it's another one that is just going to continue getting better and better there's a lot of good creatures they're printing more and more good creatures doubling up on an etb that you have or at the very least still being able to get rid of a kiki jiki someone's tapping a kiki jiki to try to go infinite and you can in response destroy the kiki jiki or no maybe you'd have to destroy the thing that it's targeting you would give them two kiki jiki yeah, yeah you have to destroy the thing, the thing that it's uh, well, no that doesn't work that doesn't it work gives it. okay. it's purely a combo it's card really, is the thing okay, right really that's why it's a three <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's not okay, also yeah, right. like a like yeah. a bounce spell but if you want to kill your own dockside and reanimate it which corvo does this is like a dream card that's the thing right because not only will you get two docksides but you're putting the actual dockside in the graveyard for you to reanimate right where i want it yeah i'm gonna bring it right back anyway so exactly i've been having a lot of fun with the card lately i think it's super powerful in the right deck but in the wrong and it gets it's it's very a yeah. niche situation like if um man spell seeker sucks now man yeah i mean mm, this can't find could go get this like this would be a really good way to like oh hey look at this cool combo i put together uh, but yeah like, that would be good is there a spell seeker that finds three cmc or higher no uh, it finds no. six cmc or higher something like that right you're thinking of uh, the green cards that go find like Maybe. a creature six. I, I thought there was. Higher. I thought there was a. Uh, I got an expensive blue creature that finds an expensive uh, instant sorcery. I don't know. I know that there was Micromancer, but. Who knows? What, who who knows? knows? Yeah. Well, we still have a bunch of other cards that we are gonna save for another podcast. Um. So, that's what. That's how good we think these cards are. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you could do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Demon of Razgris and Baby g If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at the merch store, playtowinmtg.com. Thank you so much, Dragon Shield, for supporting the show. Don't forget, if you want to get any of their awesome sleeves or any other product, you can check out the affiliate link we have right down below. You can check us out on social media at TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Let's give a shout out to our $50 patrons. AJ Albo Saibi. Jake Tofield. Stashes. Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Man Solo. Nicola Mayer Rakovic. Steven Schlichty. Big TP15. Yeah, green guy. Plantain Jackson. Isaiah Broliski. Metal Plays Games. C. Kuwaja Yamid. Jacob Depp. 
Michael Blue. Dion Wildfang. Thomas Bueno. Bumpy McGee. Lauren Connor. David Nielsen. Tormax. Well, welcome to Play to Win, where we shit. I messed it up. <laughs> welcome to Play to Win, where we shit. <laughs> Well, there's shitters here, that's We are sure. shitters. Big welcome to Shit to Win. That's a good one. There's a smoky haze in the room currently. Don't worry about that. 